Kirby, I'll be with you. No problem. That's fine. Yes, we'll try our best. Yes, we can do that. We'll try to do that. Okay, thank you. Bye. Pet manager, he wants us to clear three spaces today. It's never ending. Let's see what we can do. We can try chasing the referral from Mr. Kirby at the community hospital. Where is notes? Well, Dr. Ahmed's already got him medically stable and signed off. So he should be the next one to move on? Yes, but has he had his assessment yet? They were all away at that conference last week. I think he'll have slipped through the net. Well, I'd get in there as quickly as possible before anyone else picks it up. I'll phone them. Is it alright if I go for my break now? You won't get that buzz on your way off, would you? Who is it? Guess. Oh no, not Mr. Kirby. Yes, Mr. Kirby, what can I do for you? The slipper's come off my foot again. Can you put it back on? Is that all you wanted me for? Just before you go, can you get me a glass of water? I, I don't know where my tea went. I think they missed me out. This was your tea. Look at the mess of it all. Hello, Jennings Ward. Hello, it's Staff Nurse Biggs here, Ward 9 at the Cute Hospital. Could I speak to the nurse in charge, please? Sisters at a meeting till 12, can I help you? Yes, I'm sure you can. I'm calling about Mr Kirby, who will be referred to you. Do you need any more information before you accept him? Let me just uh, get his referral notes. Um, right, I could do with just checking a few details, please. Um, the past medical history I have that Mr Kirby is a 72-year-old gentleman with type 2 diabetes. He has an old stroke resulting in left side weakness. He had a fall a couple of months ago and fractured his humerus and that was repaired. And following some rehab he was discharged home about two weeks ago. Yep. He's not coped well at home and was readmitted last Tuesday with heart failure. Yeah, that all sounds right. OK, so can you confirm you're referring Mr Kirby to us for rehab, focusing on improving his mobility and discharging him home? Yes, that's right. He needs his mobility improving and he definitely needs discharging. OK, can I just ask a few questions about how Mr Kirby's been getting on with you? OK. What's his mobility like at the moment? Well, let me have a look. He's just in front of me now. Uh, well, he's sitting out in a chair at the moment and uh, he has a Zimmer frame and we usually only give those to patients who are mobilising with supervision. Um, his degree of self-care is fine, he usually manages to wash the top half himself and he gets by with a bit of help now and again. And what about eating and drinking? Eating and drinking? Oh, definitely no problems there, he really enjoys his food. Okay, and what's the family situation like? Well, Mr Kirby was recently bereaved. His wife died a few months ago, so he actually lives alone now. Uh, he has a son who's keen to offer extra help when his dad gets discharged. He nearly works down the road from where his father lives, so he's really close by to help out if any problems cropped up. OK, good. That's, that's fine. So all in all, would you say Mr Kirby's a good candidate for our six-week rehab programme? He sounds really keen and motivated. Oh, definitely. He really wants to get home. I can't believe it's taken us the best part of an hour to get here. It's supposed to be a community hospital. Whose community? I'm not looking forward to this. I hope Dad's going to be out soon. Uh, ah, Jennings Ward this way. He was right at the other hospital. I hope the move out here has not set him back. Set him back? Is that a joke? Your Dad's such a lazy old sod. He's really making the most of all this attention he's getting in hospital. Oh, come on, Sue. He's an old man. He just needs a bit of support. Listen, I can see where this is heading, and my answer is no. He's never given us the time of day unless he wants something. All that running around when your mum died, doing his cooking, doing his washing, taking time off work. He just sat on his backside and never even said thank you. Well, he was upset. Upset? He's never lifted a finger to do anything since he retired. I said it then and I'm saying it now. Never again. Look, let's just see what the doctor's got to say. Maybe all this treatment he's had will sort him out. As far as I'm concerned, he's only got himself to blame if he ends up in an old people's home. I'll say no more. Just don't make any promises you can't keep. Uh, excuse me. Um, I'm Mr Kirby's son. I was wondering if I could see his consultant to see how he's getting on. I'm afraid the consultant won't be in until Monday. Monday? Your father's just over there. He's having a little nap at the moment. 
Well, I'd like to have a word with somebody, if possible. I'd like to see how much longer you might be in here. Well, I'm afraid the consultant hasn't seen your father yet. He only comes to this hospital once a week and just missed the ward round. So my father-in-law's been sitting around here doing nothing for four whole days? No, not at all. We've got a whole team of people who've been assessing him. So how is he? Well, to be honest, he's not as active as we thought he would be when he was referred. I'll just go and find his notes for you. Days on end, just sat on his backside with lots of women to look after him. You must think he's already died and gone to heaven. Right. Next is Mr Kirby. Is he coming to the meeting? He was invited, but he said he didn't want to come this week. And his family? Busy with work again, I think. OK. He's been with us for five weeks now. Remind me, has the intermediate care team been involved? No, we decided he wasn't really a candidate. Another poor referral from rehab, I'm afraid. OK. Well, we've got him now. How's he doing? What about his physio? Well, Mr Kirby's physio is Nina, but I'm afraid she's off sick today. I did have a chat with her on Friday, so I could give you a quick overview. Um, she says uh, his mobilisation's very poor. He can walk using a frame, but he's not doing his exercises unless she's there to really push him. Um, he's complaining about pain in his feet, so she's asked the podiatrist to have a look. And her main fear about his discharge is the risk of a fall. Thanks. What about the home access visit? Did you manage to get that done, Jill? Yes, it's taken a couple of weeks, but the son finally managed to get some time off work and meet me at Mr Kirby's house. It's quite a bit of work needed at home for Mr Kirby, mainly because of his mobility. Um, things like handrails around the front door, grab rails around the toilet. Um, I've tried to assess his potential around activities for daily living, but every time I try and work with him, he says he's tired or he's in pain and he wants to sit down. Now, Sally and I have talked, but we can't finalise the care package until we've had a family meeting. I've put a full report in the notes um, with some recommendations, but the most important thing is the home team assessment with Mr Kirby. Mm. He's going to need quite a bit of support with his self-care. Um, but from what Jill and the nurses tell me, his son's quite keen to get him home. So I'm sure that we'll get quite a bit of support from the family. Uh -huh. That's what I thought until yesterday. But now there's all this gas fire business. We can't do anything until that's sorted out. Yeah, that's a bit odd. One of my recommendations was that the fire in the front room ought to be looked at by a Corgi registered fitter uh, because it was a bit the worse for wear. Right. But yesterday we heard that the son had removed the fire completely and was very vague about what he was going to do about it or when. That doesn't sound like him. Yeah, well, it's hard to believe that you would take a fire out of the room with no plans to replace it. Mm. Comes across as really willing and helpful. Well, I'm not sure what we can do about that. We can't send Mr Kirby home if there's no heating. What about his current nursing needs? Mr Kirby's motivation is very poor. He reluctantly washes his face and attempts to shave, but he's very dependent on the nursing staff for all his personal care and toileting, even though the therapists say he can do it himself. What about his eating and drinking? Put in front of him, he can uh, feed himself, but he often asks for drinks to be poured. I've asked the dietitians to assess him because of his diabetes. His blood sugars have been a bit erratic since he's been in, and he's a dead weight to transfer. I assessed Mr Kirby and have looked at the food charts the nurses have been keeping. It seems that although he's able to feed himself, it's often the case that he doesn't complete a meal offered. This may be affecting his blood glucose levels. I see his cholesterol remains very high, despite medication. It would be interesting to find out more about how well he was eating before admission, in fact, what he was eating. We've been trying him on supplementary drinks. These have improved his nutritional status a bit, but his blood glucose levels still remain rather high. I'm wondering if visitors are bringing him in cakes and chocolates. Any other issues we need to be considering at the moment? This lack of motivation, has anyone considered whether it could be due to depression? Well, that's something we need to rule out before he goes home. OK. Anything else? Pharmacy. Uh, the nurses have highlighted a possible issue with medicine compliance at home, specifically the admission of his diuretics. He was admitted for exacerbation of his heart failure, and I think the two may be linked. The nurses have also fed back that his son says that since he's been in hospital, 
His father's legs had never looked so good. Apparently, his mobility was severely restricted by his edematous legs at home. Once we got a date for discharge, I look into whether Mr. Kirby's community pharmacists can provide any medication compliance aids and whether the son can monitor these and check that his father's been taking the right tablets each day. Well, it looks as though we won't be discharging him this week. We'll have to pave the way so that we can get him moving uh, once we've sorted these issues out. Perhaps it's a job for social services to find out about the gas fire and what the son's planning to do. Yes, I'll have another chat with Mr Kirby and I'll um, see if I can get the son and his wife in for a quick chat. Hello, Mr Kirby. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you, Doctor. Although my hair could do with cutting. Right. They used to have someone come round every week in the last place. Well, I'm sure we can help you out with that. I'll have a word with Jenny as soon as we've finished the ward round. Now, when we spoke last week, I did say that we were hoping we'd be able to send you home soon. Yeah, that's right. Well, we had a team meeting earlier this morning, and I'm afraid there are one or two things that we still need to sort out. So I'm afraid you're going to have to stay with us a little longer. Is that all right? Uh, right. Good. Are there any questions? Well, only about my hair. I'll get Jenny to sort it out for you. Good. I'll see you next week, Mr Kirby. Goodbye. Nurse? Nurse? Yes, Mr Kirby? Did the doctor say I was going home today? Only I don't know what time my son's coming in. You best give him a ring and ask him to bring my overcoat and door keys. Right, here we go. Take a seat. Thank you. Shame mm. your wife couldn't make it. No, it's, 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 a, it's a busy period in the department store where she works, so she doesn't get much time off. In fact, I haven't got much time today either. Well, thanks for coming in. I shan't keep you very long. I know we've spoken on the phone, but it's nice to get a chance to speak face to face. Yes. Now, I've been having a word with your father, and I wanted to get some input from you so we can think about what we can put in place for him when he returns home from hospital. Now, I know you've already spoken to Jill, the occupational therapist, and she says you're keen to help. Um, well, yes. Now, we had a team meeting on Monday and one of the issues that came up was the question of the gas fire in your father's house. Now, when do you think you'll be able to have the heating sorted out? Oh, well, that's the problem, you see. Um, I mean, there's no way Dad can go home in, in this cold weather, is there? No, of course not. But I understood you were getting the fire mended. Yes, I will do. It's just uh, I've got to make that owes me a favour and it'll, it'll take me a couple of weeks. Right, OK. Well, in the meantime, there is a local charity that provides help for older people and they may be able to lend your father an electric fire. Oh, electric? Oh, no, no, no. They cost a bomb to run, don't they? Dad couldn't afford that. No, no, I just, I just need a bit more time to get this friend of mine to sort it out. It'll be all right. OK, I see. So, uh, can we talk about how much help you can give your father once he returns home from hospital? I understand you started discussing it with Jill when she did the home visit at your father's house. Uh, yes, well, we've been thinking about it since then, and actually it's, um, it's, a, it's a bit difficult because, um, although I'm only down the road at work, uh, I can't really be coming home every couple of hours to look after my dad. I see. Well, you have to appreciate my situation. I'm, I'm the boss, and, and if I start taking time off, I'll have every bloke and his dog wanting to go home to look after their family when they've got problems. I mean, it, it's just not appropriate for me to do that. Right, OK. Well, what about your wife? Would she be able to help out from time to time? Oh, no, no, no. She's far too busy at work, and anyhow, she's got a bad back, and I wouldn't, wouldn't want her to do anything that might make her jar it. Anyway, isn't it your job to sort these sort of things out? Well, yes. Quite possibly, we will be able to provide some care, but we'll have to do an assessment to find out how many hours a week he's eligible for, and then it'll be up to you and him to work out when you want those hours to be. But you do need to understand that it's quite likely that we won't be able to provide all the care your father needs. So if you can't help him, you may have to think about paying for extra care. Paying? Well, money's tight at the moment. I mean, I've just taken out a loan on the business and my daughter's at university and the other one's starting in September. Well, that's going to take up all of our cash and, and more. OK. 
So you're saying you don't think you could make any financial contribution to his care at the moment? No, not really. Well, I'll be having a word with your father about this, obviously, as any care payments will depend on his financial situation rather than yours. That's an old age pensioner. He hasn't got any money. Well, I will have to confirm that with your father directly. Sometimes older people can have accumulated quite a large amount of money. Well, he's worked hard all of his life. He's paid his stamp, and now for the first time that he comes to want some support... I'm... I mean, he scrimped and saved so that he could leave a little money to the grandchildren, and now it's looking like it's all going to be used up paying for care morning, noon and night. I just think that's shocking. Look, nothing's definite about finances until we speak to your father and thoroughly assess him. Look, Mr Kirby, you've already shown concerns about your father being able to manage a loan. So there is one other option I ought to mention and that is residential care. It is a very good alternative when either a client or his family feel that returning home is unrealistic. Well, that's it. I mean, I've been talking to my wife since we met with the occupational therapist, and, I mean, when you think about what Dad actually needs and how much help he's going to need, it's not like the kids are going to help much either, because they're not really close to the granddad. I mean, to be honest with you, we're not very good at, you know, with old people and that sort of stuff. I mean, especially not when it's your father, you know? Just going to draw the curtains so we can get a bit of privacy, Mr Kirby. So, how are you today, then, Mr Kirby? Oh, muddling through. I'm not on to make a fuss about anything. You know me. <laughs> good, good. Well, as you know, Mr Kirby, I've been making some inquiries to explore what arrangements we need to make for you to be able to go home. So, tell me, from your point of view, what would you like to happen, ideally? Well, I told you yesterday, I don't need any arrangements. I've got my own house. I, I can do anything I want there. Uh, my son will be working nearby, and, he, and he, he'll be on hand to look after me. Oh, I see. Um, but have you actually spoken to your son during the last two days? Well, he's family, isn't it? I don't need to make arrangements for my, old, my own son. Of course he'll be there for me when I come home. I'm sure that your son wants to help you to get out of hospital quickly. But... Looking after somebody every day is a very big commitment and maybe your son won't be able to give you all the help that you're going to need. I believe he's very busy at work. I don't know who you've been talking to. Uh, what makes you think I need all this care when I get home? Well, the nurses tell me that you still need lots of help with things like washing and going to the toilet and so on. Well, that's only because I'm in hospital. That's what the nurses are there for. If I tell them not to do it, they might get upset. Uh, all I need to do is get back home and when I can start doing everything, just like I did before I came in. Yes, but are you sure that you're as well now as you were then? I mean, in the last few months, you've had heart problems and you've broken your arm. Not to mention the old stroke. And all of those things are bound to have put you back a bit. Blimey, you're, you're a comfort, aren't you? You're supposed to be bucking me up, not, to, uh, uh, not reminding me of everything that's happened. The best thing I can do is put everything behind me, get back home as quickly as possible, with my family around me to help me out. Mr Kirby, the last thing I want to do is to dampen your spirit. But I have to base any decision I make on the feedback that I've received from everybody involved in your care. And the team are, are raising a lot of problems. Now, you still need a lot of help with basic tasks like washing. And your walking is not coming along as well as we'd hoped. And there's concern about you being alone at home in case you fall. There's no heating in your bungalow since the gas fire was removed. And your son is just not able to look after you because of problems at work. All in all, it wouldn't be safe for you to go home. Even if I organised carers to come in every couple of hours, the gaps in between would still be too long, and you wouldn't be entitled to any help during the night. On balance, I was wondering if you'd ever thought about living in a more sheltered or supervised environment. 
Oh, I see. Uh, two days in hospital and you opt to push me out into an old people's home. Uh, I'd rather die than end up in one of those places. You're all the same, you lot, poking your nose in where you're not wanted. Look, Mr Kirby, the last thing I want to do is to upset you. But I do have to be very honest about the situation. There's no point in me sending you home, pretending everything's fine, for you only then to end up back in casualty because you've had an accident. I just want to go home. I promise I'll try harder with my walking and everything else. Please, I just want to be given another chance. There must be something you can do for me. All I want is to prove that I'm serious about sorting myself out. The problem I have is that all the reports are saying the same thing. That after five weeks of intensive rehab, you really haven't got on as well as we'd all hoped. I really don't know what more you think you can achieve. Well, I haven't been that well. I mean, I know I haven't tried hard, but, but nobody told me when I came into hospital for a rest that I'd end up in an old person's home. I just wanted to fail to prove to you. Surely there's something you can do for me.